guys, it's Anissa. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are doing another review. I feel like I'm doing one of these like four times a month. But in this review, it's just gonna be a little bit different because I'm actually testing more than one product. Haley's Beauty Complexion Line. I have everything except for the concealer. First, we have the foundation, then we have the primer, and then we have the loose setting powder. If you guys like these videos, lucky you, I have a whole playlist that you can go binge watch. If you guys wanna see my thoughts on these three products, then please keep on watching. But before we go anywhere, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. I post on this channel every four days, so you never have to miss me for too long. But yeah, let's just go ahead and get into it. Guys, it is day one. I went ahead and did my eyebrows and my eyeshadow off camera. I will leave everything that I used in the description box, the same eye products for the whole video. Today's review is a little bit different because we are actually testing more than one product. So we're testing the powder, the primer, and the foundation. I think depending on how they look today is going to determine if I'm going to swap out any of these products because I really wanna see how three the three of them work together. In my opinion, when a brand puts multiple things in a line, like a primer, foundation, concealer, they're saying, hey, these products work the best together, so use them together. The first thing I'm gonna be using is this Haley's Beauty Refine Prime Foundation Primer. It's gonna help your makeup last, cruelty-free and vegan. It claims to be a natural face primer that helps to hydrate and prep skin. The reason I'm using this is because it's supposed to be really good for filling in your pores. So I'm really curious to see if it's gonna do that for me. And this little tube does retail for $12 compared to the foundation. Like this is really, really small. I thought when I had ordered it that this was the travel size of it, but it's not. But then again, maybe you just don't need a lot of product. It like separated. Same consistency as the next pore filler except it blends into the skin a lot easier. And I'm gonna do half of my face, that way we can compare it to the other side. Oh wow, do you see where it has literally mattified and also filled in my pores from here to here? My skin looks really blurred on this side and it's really smooth, which gives me hope that any product that I put on top of this is going to go on really easily. And it even has like filled in the pores of my, not pores, but the lines of my fingerprints. I'm not using a, a whole lot, I'm using a good amount. I have found very few primers that can mattify and fill in your pores and that just did that. There is no shine left on my face at all if I'm moving in the light like this. I'm just gonna go ahead and pop on this Anastasia Beverly Hills foundation stick in the color Cool Earth. And then I'm also going to be using my LA Girl Pro Conceal. This is in the color Orange Corrector. As I was blending out these two, there was no tugging or pulling on the skin. My product was able to glide onto the skin with ease. Next, we are going to be testing this Haley's Beauty Reset Matte Liquid Foundation. And I've already filmed this video once. And when I filmed it, I filmed with the color 8.75. As you can see, these two are very, very different. The reason that I went with 8.75, on the website, they have a match finder, which I'll put right here. And they base your matches off of Fenty, which is one of the best matches for me, and also the MAC. And based off of the color 420, they gave me this. 420 looks like this. So if anything, this is a lot, lot closer. I kept this because I don't know if I'll even get this dark in the summertime. They don't even take returns, I don't think, right now. This foundation retails for $20 and you get one fluid ounce with it. An oil-free liquid matte foundation and it's supposed to have a double dose of pigment to deliver instant coverage that hides all imperfections. Matte finish, like I said, it's for all skin types. It's available in 33 shades, which is all right. The dark side of this shade range was a lot heavier, which is something you do not see a lot of at all. I wanted to mention the packaging of this because this is just so different than anything I have ever used. It reminds me of a tinted moisturizer just because it's in a squeezy tube. And also it's just really long and thin. When we test foundations on this channel, we do half beauty sponge, half brush. I'm actually going to be using this Haley's Beauty beauty sponge. And I have used this before and I'm guessing that I liked it because I went ahead and ordered two more. And what I also like about this sponge, it is super, super pointy. I'm excited to see how this does with my concealer. Really help get up into that little inner tear duct. This is what the squeezy tube looks like. Okay, let's see. She has coverage and it looks like it doesn't take very long to dry down because it already looks 
pretty matte on the skin. Some foundations that claim to have a matte finish, they need a little time to dry down, but I don't think the same with this one. It kind of is really fast drying actually because I just put that on my skin. How quickly this dries reminds me of a liquid to powder formula. You know it does definitely have that matte finish, but I also feel like that can be a little bit hard to work with, especially if you're somebody that puts all of your foundation on your face at first. I would work in sections. It looks really pretty up close. I think I could build this up, but I'm really, I don't feel like I need to. I would say that it does have that medium coverage. I could see that it had coverage when I was blending it out. I am going to go ahead and use my Morphe M439 on the other side of my face. And again, I'm just going to work in sections. In theory, I should get a little bit more coverage on this side. I found with most foundations, you will tend to get a little bit more coverage with a brush than you will with a sponge. This stinks. I don't like the smell of this. It smells very natural. You know how you smell natural products sometimes and you're like, ooh, this is not it, but it works. Yeah, that's how this is. And I really feel like I honestly used less foundation than I usually do. Usually my foundation and contour kind of mix to get make it a little bit lighter. That way it's not super apparent. But this, I feel like did not really mix. Dried so fast that it didn't have the opportunity to mix with it. The finish of this reminds me a lot of the NARS Soft Matte Foundation. I want to test out this loose setting powder and I think I'm gonna use it all over my face. But I really wanna see how this works with my favorite concealer, my Too Faced Born This Way in the color Butterscotch. And underneath my eye for the powder, I'm gonna do one eye with the sponge and then one eye with a brush. Using this Haley's Beauty sponge. Oh yeah, like this fits perfectly. I love, you guys know, my favorite, favorite sponges of all time are the e.l.f. ones, but they do tend to be a little bit, they're not as pointy as this one. Even like the Beauty Blender is not this pointy. And it makes it super easy to really get up underneath your eye. And that was super quick. I tend to lean towards a sponge that's a little bit on the softer side. And I think that I like this one because it is soft, but it's a little bit more dense than the e.l.f. beauty sponges in the material. It's very velvety. I am actually going to go straight in with this and then as I'm applying this powder, I will read the claims to you guys. Always just going underneath my eye with a little brush to make sure everything's really blended out. This is the Haley's Beauty Retouch Setting Powder. It retails for $22. And it's for all skin types. Oh wow. And it is a silky vegan setting powder designed to soothe and nourish skin for an airbrush finish. Coverage tends to be sheer. I really like the way that blended out. It was super easy to apply. It just melted into the skin and truly does look translucent, especially with the sponge. It's like it just soaked into my skin. I don't like using a sponge all over my face. I prefer using a powder brush. And I was a little bit scared that this actually wasn't gonna be translucent because it does have the slightest bit of yellow in it. That just disappears into the skin. It's kind of amazing. And it's very finely milled. Isn't, as it said, going to give any coverage. It's just going to mattify and help blur whatever you already have. My pores have never looked as good as they do right now. And I really, really think that it is that primer. That primer did such a good job of giving me a nice base to work with. My cheeks look awesome. So does my forehead. Everything looks really, really good, guys. Finish the rest of my face up real quick and then I'll be back. All right, guys, this is the finished look. I wanted to point out that I did not use a mattifying setting spray. I just used this NYX Bear with me. When I'm testing mattifying products, I really go out of my way to try to make sure I don't use other mattifying products that aren't being reviewed because I truly want to see how mattifying they are on their own. And this could be my fault because I didn't build the foundation up like I probably could have. I still can kind of see some of my little beauty marks peeking through right here. Usually I can tell you guys which side I prefer, blender side or the brush side, and I'm really not sure. So maybe tomorrow if I build it up, I'll be able to tell a little bit more of a difference. 714, I started filming this at 630. My plan is tomorrow to test this at work to do the exact same face. The only thing I'm changing is my under eye concealer. Take a picture for you guys. That way we can see if this has any flashback. No flashback, y'all. That actually looks really, really good. I will take pictures, maybe some videos. So far, tens across the board, except my only complaint, if I'm really, really gonna nitpick, is the smell of this. It's something you definitely have to get used to. One of my favorite hair masks from Shea Moisture smells disgusting, but it works, so I put up with it. And then my other complaint would be trying to find your match. They don't sell this in store, this is online. If you do use Fenty or if you use Max, see which shade they recommend you and go lighter. I will see you guys in a little bit. 
All right, y'all, it is currently 1.39, so it's about seven hours, but I have to run off to work. So I just wanna show you guys what my face looks like. The lighting is a little bit different because I don't have all my lights turned on, but I wanna show you guys pictures. I took one at nine and one at 12. My face looked the exact same pretty much all day. The only thing that I noticed, my pores are a little bit more prevalent right here and my oil is starting to peek through right up here. But it's not like it's been like that. It just started probably an hour ago. My cheeks still look really good. And my nose too even kind of is getting a little bit oily. I'm really excited to see how this does tomorrow. And I'm also impressed because I did not use the same amount of makeup that I would usually use. So that really says a lot. So I have really high hopes tomorrow that even though I'll be wearing the mask, it'll still do a good job because I'm gonna use a little bit more product and really go for a full coverage tomorrow. I will see you guys tomorrow. All right guys, it is the beginning of day two. I'm just going in with this primer. Before I say anything, that feels so good going on the skin. You guys see how easy it was for me to rub in. Some of my favorite primers, they work amazing, but you really have to like work them into the skin, which honestly doesn't really bother me because then you know that it's truly getting sunk into your skin. It kind of does like what the Laura Mercier does for my under eyes. So far, my only complaint about this is the fact that it's so small, but at the same time, that does make it really travel friendly. I'm so glad that I bought more than one of these sponges because we can start with a fresh new one every day. I know I said I didn't have a preference, but you guys ever have those days where you just know you want to use a sponge and not a brush? That's kind of like how I'm feeling today. I'm going to use more than I did yesterday. I want to see if it's something that you can really build. I do remember from yesterday that you do have to work in sections. It does dry down very fast. I think too, especially when you start manipulating it, just the combo of the primer and the foundation together, so good. My imperfections are peeking through, but I look so smooth that it kind of just looks like it's supposed to be there. And I can tell you guys it dries down fast because look at my sponge, it usually never does that. It does that with a couple other mattifying foundations. It's like it can't even fully soak into the sponge. And it's not super thick. I'd say it's like a pretty good consistency. And also what I wanted to mention about yesterday, yeah, this is definitely buildable. Obviously, when you wear makeup, you know that you have makeup on your face, but I felt, my face felt so light and airy all day, really until about hour six or seven. Oh my gosh. I wouldn't say it's full coverage, but it definitely is if you go in between medium to full on the fuller side. I didn't want to wear any eyeshadow for the next two days because I wanna see how this works on my eyelids, how the powder and the foundation work, if they will keep my eyelids matte or not. And it honestly is a pretty good match as far as my neck goes. I've also found too, it's so hard for me to find a match for my face because different parts of my face are different colors. Like the inside of my face around my eyebrows are definitely lighter than the outsides of my face. Let me know if you guys have that issue too. I wouldn't even say that what's on my face is a full pump. It still does have that funky, natural smell. You guys are probably like, oh my gosh, Anissa, how can you tell me that all of these products are good on their own? I can't. I wanted to test them all together because I A, wanted to try all of them. My Huda Beauty foundation review, that one was a little bit different because I could tell that that was the foundation. It was bad. I didn't even want to try to use it with any of my other products versus this. All these products are performing really well that I do want to try them with other products. And even if they end up not working with some of my products, I can always rely on the fact that, okay, the primer, the foundation and the powder, they're all going to look good together. Even if they don't work well with other products, it's okay because I know that they look amazing together. One of my main things that I say in my reviews is if, you know, the product doesn't work with products that I like, it has to go, but that's a little bit different because I'm reviewing a singular product versus here when you're doing three. And we are kind of seeing how the powder works differently with concealers. And I didn't even mention you guys yesterday, I was so on the fly. My under eyes looked really, really good. So for concealer, we're gonna switch it up today. This is the Jouer High Essential Coverage Concealer and I'm in the color Coffee. This is a new favorite. The Too Faced and that powder worked really, really well together. And let me just add, there are very few powders, translucent powders that I use all over my face. If a powder has extra coverage with it also, it's also going to help my makeup last longer, but that's not necessarily true. And we definitely saw that with that powder yesterday. My oils didn't even start to think about peeking through until about hour six to seven. By the end of the day, I looked like I had only been wearing my makeup for probably four or five hours. It was very lightweight, didn't make anything look weird. Also did not have flashback. Translucent powder is a scary thing, especially if you are somebody who is darker. I really didn't have a preference either. Uh, I thought that the powder worked good with brush and sponge underneath the eyes. So today I'm just gonna use sponge for both just cause that's my general preference. Let me show you guys what I was talking about yesterday if I didn't show you. It kind of has like a little bit of a yellow tint to it, which kind of psyched me out a little bit. I was like, oh no, this could be really bad. Like you can just 
physically see the difference between this eye and this eye. Initial application can be so scary because you guys saw how that looked white on the face. Like before you blend it in, you're like, okay, is this gonna stay like this or is it gonna blend out? And it just blends out so seamlessly. I'm wondering if I'm starting to develop another light spot right up here because I do have one right here too. And it doesn't make makeup patch up, but it just makes makeup look kind of weird on it. It's not nearly as bad as it was yesterday, but it just looks like I forgot to put makeup right there a little bit. That's really weird. I'm gonna go ahead and finish my face off camera and then I will be right back. Okay, I didn't do anything fancy. I just threw on some lip balm, some blush, and some mascara. The cheeks look really, really good. My pores, again, I'm just so impressed with how good that they look. You can really only see this patch on my face when I move in the light. You can see that it's lighter than the rest of my face. I'm going to take a picture right now and then I will take them all throughout the night. Right now it is 137 so this makeup will come off hopefully at about like 10 15. It doesn't claim to be transfer proof but I want to see how long it really takes for it to break down the makeup. I will see you guys at 10 o'clock. I want nothing more than to just crawl into bed. It is 10 24 p.m. Just to sum this up my makeup really did not start looking any different till about I would say like seven o'clock. Didn't really change much. I'm not going to say it didn't change at all because I just feel like that's not factual. I kept looking looking at my forehead and waiting for it to look like an oil slick all day. As you can see, I look in the light, there's a little bit of oil that peeked through, but really where my makeup rubbed off the most, which does not shock me at all, is my nose. You guys have seen some of my other videos compared to other videos, this is not a lot of makeup at all. And you have to think, I didn't really put a whole bunch on top of it either. All I did was put on blush and a little bit of highlighter. Usually I would put on more stuff on top of it. It did separate around my nose, but my cheek look amazing. I found that my most problematic areas are right around here and right in here. For this to be nine hours of wear, this does not look bad. We are loving it. I'm so happy that this review is going good. No flashback. None at all. All right, guys, I will see you tomorrow. We are on day three, and I think this is just gonna be our final day of testing because I haven't really found anything super unusual. If anything, everything has been going surprisingly well. I already applied the primer because you guys have already seen that me do that two times. Today, I actually wanted to use, instead of the Haley's Beauty sponge, I wanted to use one of my favorites. This is an e.l.f. Con Complexion Trio sponge versus the Haley's Beauty sponge because I do really like that sponge. That's actually the first sponge from another brand that I have found that I like. I do like the way that that blended out. I like this sponge too, and I like this one just a little bit better than the Haley's Beauty sponge because it is a bit bigger, and especially with this foundation, it dries down a little bit faster. Um, but I would still, I can still see myself reaching for the Haley's Beauty one, not just with this foundation, but with other foundations, and especially when doing my concealer. And I also like this sponge because it literally takes two seconds to blend out your makeup. I still haven't figured out what was going on with my forehead. I'm curious to see if my forehead does the same thing today that it did yesterday. It's just so lightweight. It feels like a tinted moisturizer. It does not feel like a foundation, which is really shocking because it's not like the thinnest texture, but it's not super thick either. The only thing we are changing today is this Juvia's Place I Am Magic Concealer. And yesterday I didn't even mention after I got off, my under eyes still looked all right. I did notice they did crease a little bit more, so I'm guessing that it was because of the change in concealer. So we'll see how it does today, but the first day it looked really, really good. And also, I do not have to use a lot of product at all when setting my face with this powder. Barely takes any at all. Blends out so good. I am so excited to use this powder with a more like natural finish foundation because since my face is already pretty matte, there's not like a significant difference as soon as I put it on my skin. So I'm really excited to see how that works. I ahead and finish my makeup. I think after I put on like my setting spray, my skin does look a little bit more textured. I don't know if it's because I've been wearing makeup for so many days. Usually I don't wear makeup every single day for eight hours straight. If I do tonight kind of find different results, 
then I probably will wear the makeup for at least another day or two. That way I can get like a straight answer and not just, you know, have two good days and then end on a bad day and then be like, okay, well, what does all of this mean? I'm wearing makeup under a studio light and that is like the harshest, ooh, my eyelashes are sticking together. That's the harshest light to test makeup in. My forehead did not do that weird thing that it did yesterday. You can't expect your makeup to get rid of your texture unless it claims to do that, uh, but usually, I don't know. I, I noticed it after I put on powder products and usually I'll notice that before I put on cream to powder. It's currently 1.30, so I got off work at 10, so I will see you guys then. It is 10.22, so I've been wearing this makeup for what, like nine hours? Three or four different pictures that I will put up here right now, but I had shared with you guys that I had noticed that a lot of my texture was accentuated and that is like so true. I'm matte but I still have so much texture on my face. My makeup separated around my mouth. The only thing that I used differently was my e.l.f. sponge. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna film me putting it on tomorrow, but I am gonna wear it for a little bit tomorrow. I'm gonna go back to using the Haley's Beauty sponge. I'm on a five day stretch right now and I just ended it and I think that my body is just stressed and I'm very tired and I think my skin definitely reflects that. So I'm not gonna make excuses for the foundation because I really truly do think that it was that sponge or like what I said, just stress and my skin kind of like acting up and hating me, which is nothing new. Some products don't like certain sponges, they don't like certain brushes, and that is completely fine. It's just figuring out what it is. I will see you guys in the morning. Hey guys, I'm back, it is the next day. I went ahead and just did my full face because I figured you guys were pretty much sick and tired of seeing it at this point because it's the same products. I kind of noticed the same thing that I did yesterday, and I went back to using the Haley's Beauty sponge just to make sure that it wasn't my e.l.f. sponge, which I don't think it was. I really think my skin is just like going through it right now, if you guys have ever experienced that. I even noticed this morning and like before I was filming and washing my face, I have a lot more texture, a lot more breakouts and stuff like that. I can tell too that it wasn't the makeup because usually my texture will be more accentuated once my makeup starts to like break down because my face is oily, but my face was pretty matte yesterday. If I had to rank these from my favorites to my least favorites, this the primer would be my favorite, the powder would be in the middle, and then the foundation would be at the end. I'm somebody that likes a really good pore filling primer, and I also think that this primer helped the foundation to stay as matte as, it long, as long as it did. And same thing with the powder. If you are a girl of color, you need to give this powder a try. It is one of the very, very few that I have tried that is truly translucent, does not have any flashback, but also mattifies you, keeps your makeup in place without adding any other color or changing the color of your face. When I think of like more fast drying foundations, I think of ones that are really liquidy. And this one is honestly not super thin. I mean, it's like a regular texture of a foundation. I do like the packaging, the fact that it comes in a squeezy tube, you'll be able to get all your use out of your product. It's also very travel friendly. And I really appreciate the fact that it kept me as matte as it did for as long as it did. Overall, a really good review, some really good products. Would I, would I recommend you guys trying them? Absolutely yes. They're products that I had never heard of until I started watching Juicy Jazz and so hopefully you guys try them and you know find a new hidden gem. Also, I will continue to use all those products off camera. Don't be surprised if you see them in upcoming tutorials in my TikToks on my beauty page. You'll be seeing them. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.